Amy Walters, I would like to keep you on the line and bring in yet another guest and friend of this program, uh, Rafe Sunshine, Executive Director of the Pat Brown Institute for Public Affairs at Cal State LA. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And as someone who teaches political science, and we even saw uh, tonight some of the senators remarking on these pivotal moments that have happened in American history, just the, the gravity of, of this all. How is it resonating with you this evening? Oh, it, it's kind of unprecedented. I mean, it's really hard to find anything in this presidency that looks like any previous presidency. And this is certainly a case. The last time the Capitol was stormed was in the War of 1812. So you have to go back pretty far for that. There's been unrest in Washington. There were battles over the Vietnam War. One thing I will say that was different this time is federal forces always defended the federal buildings, mm. including the Capitol, with massive and overwhelming force. And what startles me and stands out in historical perspective is the abandonment of the members of Congress and the U.S. Capitol by the national government. And I think reporters should be digging into how that happened, who gave those orders or lack of orders, but they were left to the protection of the city police and the Capitol Police. Uh, and they're going to be looking at this and should be looked at very quickly. That's unprecedented. I mean, that is just, I have no words for that. No, it's very stunning. And there have been uh, images flooding social media today of uh, law enforcement officers taking selfies with these extremists who stormed the building of them just basically walking on up. And, and uh, Mimi Walters, perhaps you can give us a sense, you know, for those of us, we're on the opposite end of the country. So some people up there, maybe out there might think, oh, this is something that can happen. You can just walk on up on a day like today. Does, does this shock and surprise you? And what do you think might be behind this? Yeah, I mean, I think that from what I saw on the television is that they were walking up, which you can do, but they were getting in through windows and breaking windows. Um, because typically when you go into the buildings, you have to go through security. And they got around the security by breaking through the windows. I'd never seen anything like that before. And, and perhaps this would be an opportunity to talk about what preceded uh, the events that happened today. I believe that we have some tape of President Donald Trump speaking at a rally uh, prior to what you're seeing there, people clamoring above the scaffolding uh, that is intended to be used for the inauguration. Let's take a listen to Donald Trump uh, earlier speaking at a rally. I call on President Trump to go on national television now to fulfill his oath and defend the Constitution and demand an end to this siege. Of course, apologies there. That was not Donald Trump. That was, of course, President-elect Joe Biden uh, speaking after uh, much of this violence had erupted. Uh, Rafe Sunshine, do you think that the worst of this is yet behind us in terms of, of violence and demonstrations and, and protests, or is this just the beginning? You know, I think what's gotten through to Republicans is that he's after leaders of both parties. I think what's really changed here is that he's attacking Republicans as well as Democrats. And I think that's going to continue. And I think there's a feeling in the leadership in both parties that, that even with only 14 days left to go, there's no telling what Donald Trump will do. And I wouldn't be surprised if people are pulling out their law books and trying to figure out uh, what course there is. Uh, Pence, Vice President Pence really took a step away from the president in the comments he made this evening uh, when the Senate reconvened that, that pretty strongly condemned uh, the incursion and in no way was similar to the Pence who was always kind of just one step in the shadow of Donald Trump. So who knows what steps people are considering, but I think people think 14 days is a heck of a long time if somebody is able to energize a mob to basically sack Congress. Uh, that's an amazing thing. And to stand down the federal forces that are supposed to protect Congress. Those powers are still in his hands, and I think people are very concerned. And now for the first time, I think that concern is in both parties. It's no longer just Democrats complain about Donald Trump. I think you could see it on the faces of the leaders of both parties for the first time. Yes, and, and a number of resignations uh, today uh, and, and, and expressions of intent to resign within the White House. Uh, Mimi Walters, 
The 25th Amendment is apparently being discussed this evening in Washington, D.C. Do you think that there is a real prospect of that being uh, enacted? Well, my understanding, it is being discussed. Um, and I think that probably could be enacted. Um, obviously, I'm not uh, having to seat at the table, so I don't know what kind of discussions are going on. But there is a real concern, and I do agree that um, the party leadership, I believe, in on the Republican side are concerned. And I was very impressed with Vice President Pence today. He was a true statesman and tr showed true leadership and said what needed to be said. Yeah. I do want to tie everything that has been happening today in Washington, D.C. to our lives here in Southern California. And Rafe, I'm going to tell you a true story. Uh, last night, I was driving along the 10 freeway and I saw a number of signs hung and some of them uh, very untrue derogatory statements and allegations against Joe Biden. And then... Uh, messages to recall Gavin Newsom and watching what was happening today and knowing that there were protests as, as, as Spectrum News One has been reporting uh, in Huntington Beach, uh, also in downtown Los Angeles. Do you think what we are seeing in Washington, D.C. might have some trickle down effect here in California, especially as this movement to recall our governor is gaining momentum? I think if that were to happen, it would be the death knell of the recall movement. If the, if the recall movement, which has been gathering steam, it's still a long shot, is seen as kind of a mainstream effort about governance during the crisis, then I think there's, you know, it could be some bad moments for the governor. If it is seen as an extension of the mob that took over the Capitol, then I think that's the end. I think a lot of people will withdraw from the recall if it becomes identified with this. This is going to become the single most toxic image that the Republican Party has had in decades. Uh, so in that sense, I don't think this is going to energize a recall of the governor. I think quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mimi Walters, we're just receiving word here that in this joint session, there was a vote uh, 94 to 6 to accept uh, the electors. Uh, I believe these are the Arizona electors. Uh, can you just talk us through what the next 24 hours might look like in Washington, D.C., in terms of what was usually a very straightforward process that might take place over the course of an hour or so that has now become a moment that will be written about in history books for years to come? My understanding is it's going to be a very long night for the members of Congress as they go through this process. Ultimately, uh, Joe Biden will be declared president of the United States, but you have members on the Republican side in both the House and the Senate, as we know, are going to be objecting to several of the electoral colleges. So they have a very long night ahead of them. Uh, and we'll see who ends up voting which way. Representative Mimi Walters, a former representative of Republican from Orange County, we are so very grateful to have your wisdom and your experience on a truly extraordinary evening like this. Rafe Sun and Shine of Cal State LA as well. Always so grateful to have your insight and tying it back here to Southern California. We are going